Welcome back to Mad Medicine. In this lecture, we're going to be talking about paroxysmal nocturnal hemoglobinuria. Now, if you guys don't know, on our YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash madmedicine, we have a hematology oncology playlist that you guys can watch for step one. And while you're there, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to our channel because your support means a lot to us. We post brand new step one videos every single day. So let's talk about normal acidic anemia really quickly. Just a recap, normal acidic anemia is classified by an MCV that is 80 to 100, aka a normal red blood cell uh, size. And these are going to be subdivided based off of hemolysis. So you can have non-hemolytic anemias and hemolytic anemias based off of intrinsic, intrinsic causes and extrinsic causes. So since we're going to be talking about hemolytic anemias today, let's discuss some of the intrinsic causes. And keep in mind, these are going to be issues that occur within the cell. So these can be problems with membrane deficits that occur. Uh, this can be caused by enzyme deficiencies and hemoglobinopathies. These are all going to be things occurring inside the cell that are messed up. Now with extrinsic causes, these are problems that occur outside of the cell, and these include stuff like auto autoimmune disorders, uh, microangiopathic and macroangiopathic uh, issues that occur in the big and small blood vessels, as well as infections. Now, because you are lysing red blood cells, your, white, your bone marrow are going to produce more red blood cells, and because you amp up bone, uh, production of red blood cells, you're going to see more immature red blood cells being uh, uh, secreted out of the bone marrow, and that means in hemolytic anemias, you're going to see a reticulocyte count that is greater than 2%. Normal, it's going to be 1% to 2% because you have an anemia and you have a significant decrease in red blood cell, you're going to be increasing your reticular site count. Also, keep in mind that in non-hemolytic normal acidic anemias, you're going to see a normal reticular site count. So with that being said, let's talk about paroxysmal nocturnal hemoglobinuria, PNH. Like I said earlier, this is a deficit in the membrane, and this is going to be an acquired mutation in the myeloid stem cells, myeloid stem cells, okay, that causes an absent glycophosphatidyl inositol, a GPI. Now this makes the cell more susceptible to complement mediated intravascular hemolysis. The actual membrane is not uh, is not going to be able to protect the cell and it makes it it makes the red blood cell more susceptible to complement mediated hemolysis this can be associated to aplastic anemia or uh, iron deficiency anemias due to chronic red blood cell lysis that can also occur as well as and this is really high yield AML acute myeloid leukemia a, uh, th this is going to be due to multiple mutations in the myeloid progenitor cells. AML also occurs there. And uh, keep in mind, because you have a mutation, mutation in the myeloid stem cell, you can also see P and H in AML. Now, this only happens at about 10% of patients, but you should, you should still know it for step one. You should still keep this in the back of your mind when, uh, you get, when you're when you taking the test. So let's talk about the pathogenesis of PNH. This is, like we said, an acquired mutation in the PIGA gene. So this causes an impaired synthesis of the GPI anchor for, de for uh, the decay accelerating factor DAF CD55 and membrane inhibitor of reactive lysis, aka CD59, on the red blood cell. Meaning you're going to have low CD55 slash DAF and low MRI, M M I R I L M I R L sorry slash C D fifty nine. These both are going to be low on the red blood blood cell uh, uh, surface. That is in a one of the main things that's happening now. DAF protects against complement mediated damage by inhibiting C three convertase, and M I R L protects against the MAC complex. So because you do not have these main main uh, anchors for these uh, these main uh, uh, components for red blood cell protection, these red blood cells are going to be more susceptible to complement mediated lysis because they cannot inhibit C3 convertase and they cannot prevent the MAC complex from forming on the red blood cell and essentially the red blood cell is going to be lysed due to complement and complement mediated activity. That is what is happening. You can think of this as sort of an autoimmune issue that is happening in your in your blood. Now, when it comes to the clinical presentation, the patient will present with the complaint of having red or pink urine right after the sleep uh, due to sudden nighttime hem hemolysis, and that's what's happening. Now, obviously, the patient the, the patient isn't going to say that, that he's having sudden nighttime hemolysis. What they're going to what they're going to say is in the presentation they're just complaining of having a red tint to the urine. 
but you should know that during nighttime this can cause a sudden nighttime hemolysis and the reason why is because you're gonna have mild respiratory acidosis develop with shallow breathing during sleep and this can cause complement to be activated the respiratory acidosis is gonna cause uh, the complement to be activated and this is gonna result in hemoglobinuria and hemoglobinemia in the morning patients can also have hemosiderous hemosiderinuria days after hemolysis or hemolysis and that is what's happening essentially because they are disrupting uh, their red blood cells because they are lysing the red blood cells their body is essentially releasing hemoglobin and they are now going to be uh, uh, urinating hemoglobin and they're going to have a red tint so what what's the classic triad well first of all you're going to have a negative coombs test for hemolytic anemia because you do not have any uh, uh, red blood cell antibodies it's not really an, uh, a true autoimmune disorder because you don't have anti you don't have uh, antibodies being produced to uh, for our red blood cells excuse me but because you have your complement mediated destruction of red blood cells you still have a component of your immune system that is attacking your red blood cells it's just not classified as an autoimmune disorder also you will see pancytopenia and uh, you may also see a venous thrombosis very high yield in the hepatic the portal or the cerebral veins this is the main cause of death in these patients and it's due to destroyed platelets that are releasing thrombotic factors throughout the body which leads to a venous thrombosis so this is very high yield especially the main cause of death because uh, test test makers like to question you about the the uh, pathology behind paroxysmal nocturnal uh, hemoglobinuria so let's write h y a f which stands for high yield as fuck uh <laughs> so that is the classic triad now when it comes to diagnosis and treatment of pnh you can diagnose patients who are suffering from pnh by using the sucrose test to screen for the disease now what happens in this test is that a patient's red blood cells are placed in a low ionic strength solution and observed for hemolysis that's the first thing. You can also look for uh, cytometry, flow cytometry, to show CD59 and CD55 negative red blood cells. Because remember, the CD55 red blood cells are uh, are the CD55 portion of the red blood cells are going to protect against C3 convertase, and the CD59 is going to protect against the MAC complex. And because they don't have these in PNH, you can search for these main uh, uh, receptors, and then you can also see schistocytes in the blood smear. That is another uh, aspect of hemolysis that you will see. So what are schistocytes? Just a quick review. Schistocytes are fragments of red blood cells that are, u that are usually caused based off of hemolysis. They're also known as helmet cells, and you can see a few of them right here. Right here is one right here. These are just red blood cell fragments. As you can see, they are not normal. They have been uh, they have been lysed as they went through the blood vessels. Now, the uh, schistocytes are associated with micro and macroangiopathic hemolytic anemias, DIC, TTS, TTPHUS, HELP syndrome, PNH in this case, that's what we're discussing today, as well as mechanical hemolysis based off of uh, prosthetic heart valves. It can also lead to uh, schistocytes. So when it comes to treatment, you can use a uh, you can use a, a drug called ecolizumab. Now ecolizumab is going to prevent the terminal comp uh, complement formation to prevent and to reduce the the in the in um, the incidence of red blood cell lysis. That's the main drug we can use. This is very high yield. High yield. You need to know what drug you are going to use to treat patients who have. P and H. So let's just quickly review what happens. Well, in in this uh, disease, you're gonna see an MCV that is gonna be 80 to 100. They're gonna have normal cytic anemia. Number one. Number two. The other thing you're gonna see is the fact that these patients are going to have an issue with. Let's write this down. Issue with GPI. Okay which is glycophosphatidylinositol. And another thing that it can happen is that these patients are going to have a mutation in the PIG, the PIGA gene, which leads to no CD55. Remember, CD55 is important for C3 convertase degradation and no low CD, low to no CD59, which is important for MAC complex. Okay, to prevent this. So you're going to see increase in uh, hemolysis 
And mainly what ends up happening is that these patients become at a higher risk for a venous thrombosis. Now to treat these patients, you can give a drug, equilizumab, which is going to prevent terminal complement formation. Okay, this is going to reduce MAC formation, and this will reduce the incidence of red blood cell lysis. And with that being said, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to our channel. And while you're there, go to our Instagram account at mad.medicine and follow us there, and to our Twitter account at It's Mad Medicine. And you can listen to these lectures on your favorite podcast service for free. Just search Mad Medicine, and we'll pop up.